Welcome back to Obsession Engineering and it's very yellow in here because we're looking at Tom Whedon's classic GSX-R 750. So the bike we're looking at this time is uh, an early generation GSX-R 750 SRAD. So this bike will be uh, 1996 and because it's an early bike it's on carburettors not fuel injection uh, because that is the cutoff date for classic bikes at the Manx Grand Prix, what previously was classic TT. Uh, and this bike we've seen some sort of really nice factory and kit spec stuff on the channel already this bike is a bit more uh, sort of down to earth shall we say um, but it is actually still really really trick so we'll start off with the frame it looks like a standard frame and it did start life as a road bike but it has got some bracing around the headstock the swinging arm is K3 GSX-R 1000 uh, with some additional bracing in it. So that gives it 20mm more wheelbase than the original SRAD swinging arm would have had and it allows it to run a 6 inch rear rim. So this one's on OZ front and rear wheels so it reduces a lot of the unsprung weight, gives the bike a bit more stability and the swinging arm's also a little bit stiffer than the original SRAD unit would have been. In the back of there is a period correct 46mm uh, piston Olin shock. Uh, they are excellent pieces of kit uh, and so there's absolutely no reason to need to update that. So in the front of the chassis there are a set of Team Classic Suzuki's custom yokes with optional offset set up in them. Now they look like magnesium but they're not, they're actually uh, aluminium but hard anodized so they look magnesium. Basically the aluminium is stronger, lasts longer but the hard anodizing gives it the nice sort of factory look that you're going for. Front suspension we're on KTEC DDS cartridges but in K5 GSX-R1000 forks but then Team Classic Suzuki uh, had the fork bottoms remade so they're axial mount so it fits the rules uh, and they're on the latest sort of axial uh, monoblock Brembo calipers onto big Brembo discs and an OZ wheel. So we ought to start looking at the engine uh, and if we look in the front to begin with you'll see a nice big new radiator so you need plenty of cooling not so much around the Isle of Man but this bike often goes to Scarborough and short circuits as well uh, and so especially around Scarborough where the speeds aren't as high you need good airflow and good cooling so this engine is on standard bore size for classic TT rules you can go a little bit over oversize on the bore uh, but this one's on standard but it is on Carrillo rods and Wiseco pistons there is some head work in it and some stage 2 Kent cams and this one's doing mid 130s horsepower the team actually have a proper factory engine which is a little bit stronger on power uh, but the parts in it are so rare that they don't run it around the Isle of Man because the risk of it exploding and basically being irreplaceable uh, isn't worth the risk when this engine isn't that far behind on power and this one actually has a slightly smoother torque curve making it a little bit nicer to ride on the long gearing. The engine is breathing out of a full Yoshimura system. Uh, this is a customer spec system, but the team do have uh, a factory system. But again, it's irreplaceable. And so uh, with being titanium round here, it's quite easy to crack them. Uh, and so that system isn't used around the island. They've gone for reliability over the utter bling of the factory system. And the team also have some swinging arm pivot adjustments so they can alter the uh, pivot position and alter the anti-squat in the back of the bike for that last little bit of setup detail. The fuel tank also might look standard uh, but it is quite extended about out the back of here and underneath uh, and this one holds 26 litres. Classic TT rolls and Manx Grand Prix rolls uh, you can run up to 32 litres because the two stroke 500s needed big tanks uh, and so this means that you can start the race with a really big fuel load and it basically means your pit stops are really quick because you need to put less fuel in. And because Tom uh, is very good at getting tucked in, uh, he needs a little donut so that his chin rests in there and it doesn't rattle his chin on the fuel tank. And so if you want to see this bike in action, uh, obviously you can come to the Max Grand Prix next year or get yourself to Scarborough to watch him racing at Oliver's Mound. Thanks for watching and join us again next time for some more Mike Bike Fun.